Hey there, CPO here. And next for the Tricopter, I need to update the firmware on my KK2.1 board. This ships from Hobby King with pretty much an unusable firmware. So uh, there's been a lot of great work done by some folks on the RC Group's forums, uh, and in particular, Steve IS Stevies. I'm not sure exactly how to say that. He's uh, been working on uh, making this KK2.1 board fly like it's supposed to. And so I've been following the 2.1 owner's thread as well as the KK2 uh, original thread. And uh, basically I've decided I'm going to get the most recent uh, firmware that he has put out. And so I'm going to take you through that process. And I'm doing this on a Mac, so you're going to get to see how the process goes on a Mac. But don't worry, uh, I'll do you Windows guys a solid and I'll go ahead and redo at least the initial part of getting the firmware and using the software on a Windows machine too. That way, uh, if you're needing that information, maybe this will be helpful for you. So first, let's take a look at the KK2.1 board. Here it is in the foam shipping box it comes in. I'm actually going to use this box for the installation as well. Uh, it's pretty good foam actually. The next thing you're going to need is a USB ASP programmer. I got this one from 9xrprogrammer.com. I got it to program my uh, Turnigy 9xr radio, uh, but it works great with this. It's a 10-pin programmer, but it comes with this adapter from 10 to 6. You'll need the 6 pins for this operation. So get your programming cable ready, and then we'll move to the software. So the easiest way for me to find this software is to just go to KK Multicopter in Google and look for the KK Multicopter flash tool at the lazyzero.de site. That's the one you want. Once you're on this site, take a look at it. There's a lot of great information here. But if you scroll down, you'll find the software for Windows and Linux and Mac OS X. We want the beta version of the software. That's what's going to have the ability to program the KK 2.1 board. After downloads, go ahead and open up the DMG file and then open up the KK Multicopter Flash Tool application. It might ask you if you're sure you want to open it, and of course you are. If you get this error that the KK Multicopter Flash Tool is damaged, you're going to have to go in and lower your gatekeeper settings. To do this, you need to go in to your system preferences, select security and privacy, and in the general tab down at the bottom, you can see you'll have the option to change this to allow applications to run from anywhere. And that's what you need to do here. Once you make this change, you should be able to go in and open up the application without any problems. Now here's a look at the interface itself. This is going to be the same whether you're in Windows or Unix. The default is USB ASP, which is what we're using here. And then you can see there's 2.1 listed as your controller. If you don't see 2.1, then you probably didn't get the beta firmware. Go back and get the right one. Now there's two ways to flash current firmware. One of them is to just go down and choose the 2.1 board and then look and see what firmware is available within the application. If you have any questions about one of the firmware versions, you can select it and then go click the information icon and it will actually take you to the website, uh, in this case RC Group's thread, where you can see the firmware information. It's a great way if you're not sure exactly what you want or if you wanted to look for a certain revision. For my build, I'm actually looking for the newest version of firmware which isn't yet showing in the Flash application. So I'm just going to go back and click on uh, the blog for Stevie's and then look at his most recent version. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom where I can download this file. It's a zip file. And once I download it, I'm just going to extract it. And then after that, we can go back into the application. So to manually load firmware, you click the File button instead of Repository. And then browse for the firmware that we just downloaded and unzipped. It's pretty cool because it only shows you folders and hex files, which is what the firmware is. So all these blank spaces are actual files, but you don't get to see them, which makes it easy to find what you're looking for. So we can just click on the hex file that we need, do open, and then uh, we're ready to actually burn this to our KK 2.1 board. I know many of you probably won't like working inside this foam block, but it's kind of 
hard to get this thing out. So the trick I found is just go ahead and plug in the cable and then just pull up on it and it'll be easy to take out the board. I do that with servo wires too. I, however, uh, am going to leave it inside the foam. I'm working on a metal computer, so this makes it safer. So now we need to plug our programming cable into the board, and we're going to plug it right here where the six pins are, right below the connection points for the uh, receiver. Your programmer cable should have a red line on one side to indicate the number one pin. That's actually going to go down towards the bottom of the board, or pointing away from all of the servo connection pins. Just like that. And of course the other side you're going to plug into your computer. Once you do this you'll see the green light light up indicating you've got power and then your board will power on. If your board doesn't power on you might have the cable installed backwards. So now we go back to the app. I'm going to leave the picture of the KK board up just so you can see what happens as we go through this process. Now go ahead and click the green running man button which will start writing the firmware to the board. I don't want you to panic if the screen goes blank, because that happens. And I'm not speeding up the video here, this is real time, so you can see how long it takes to wait for this process to happen. You should notice that the red light is on on your programming interface. That just indicates that there's activity. That's a good thing. You'll also notice that the light around the display is still lit, even though the display is blank. At this point, it's done writing the data. Now it's reading it to verify that everything wrote properly. And we're done. And at this point, you can see it takes me to the gyro screen. I'm not going to get into any configuration in this video, but I did want to show you how to quickly check uh, the version and make sure that you actually are running the version that you thought you were. So I just hit the back button on the menu, and I'm going to hit it one more time. It flashes the version for just a second, but not really long enough for me to see what's going on. So I'm going to click the far right button to go into the menu, and then I'm going to use the down button to scroll down through the menu options. I do notice several of the menu items that are specific to uh, this firmware version that I'm using. Uh, but if you scroll all the way down, you'll see a version option, and then just click the enter button, and there you go. This is firmware 1.11 S2. Now for a quick troubleshooting tip. If you try and burn the firmware, and it immediately fails with an error, uh, such as this. What I usually do to get past this is just unplug the USB, programmer and replug it back in and it seems to always clear out for me so if you get this error just try that it should fix it all right let's do this in windows so going back to the lazyzero.de site uh, and getting back to the firmware download location we're basically going to go down and just grab the windows version this time obviously but before we do that we need to download the drivers unlike the mac version the Windows version does not come with the drivers by default. So there's a link here that you can use to get to the driver download page. Once there, you'll go down to the drivers section, which is below downloads, and click on this USB ASP Win Driver link. It'll download a zip file that you'll need. Open that file up and then extract all the files. Choosing the default location is just fine. Just remember where they're at so that you can browse to them later. I often have very poor luck with automated driver installations in Windows, so I think the most consistent way to get this done is to do it manually. So go ahead and plug your USB programmer into the computer, and you'll likely get an error that says the driver installation failed. That's okay, we'll fix that. Go to Start, Computer, right-click on Computer, and then go to Properties. And here you want to click on Device Manager. You'll likely find your programmer listed in the Other Devices section. So right click on it, choose Update Driver Software. Then choose Browse My Computer for Driver Software. And then browse to the location that you extracted the drivers to earlier. Select the Live USB 1.2.4.0 folder and choose OK. 
and then you can click next here. You'll likely get this security pop-up. Go ahead and click install drivers. If all went well, you'll see a window that says that your drivers were updated successfully. And back in the device drivers, your USB ASP device will no longer have a yellow triangle. So now let's go back to the lazyzero.de site, go to the download section, and download the software for Windows. Again, make sure you're getting the beta software. Now go ahead and extract all the files from the zip file. And once that's done, go ahead and go into that folder and then execute the KK Flash tool for your particular operating system, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. And then once you're inside the software, it's exactly the same as I showed you on the Mac. So nothing more to see here. Hope that was helpful for both the Mac and Windows users. And that's it. So as usual, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.